Hey everybody, today Rado runs down the quest for Eldorado, the Golden Temples. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Eldorado itself, folks. We have finally made it after the original quest for Eldorado and the Heroes and Hexes expansion, both of which were full of adventurers traipsing through super dense jungles trying to find the lost city of Eldorado. With this new expansion, which also functions as a completely standalone game, we have reached El Dorado, and we are actually exploring the City of Gold itself. Which is why, uh, if you're familiar with the original games, you might be thinking this looks a little bit different. We have an entirely new terrain type, act uh, type temple spaces, which are all kinds of gold. And to be able to move through them, we need torches, which is a new movement resource. Uh, we cannot get through these temple spaces because they're dark without torches. Machetes won't do it, money won't do it, paddles won't do it, etc, etc. So, the landscape has changed a little bit, and that's just the beginning. There are several really big game-changing elements uh, that are introduced here. Now, you can play uh, El Dorado uh, Temples as a standalone, which is what I'm doing right now, which means you start out here and you spend your entire time in El Dorado trying to find one, two, three lost gems. Because if you can get one of each of these gems, you're then allowed to enter the main temple. And as soon as somebody does that, they win. But you may notice, these gems are scattered hither and yon. And what that means is, we actually have to... In the original Eldorados, we just raced. We just had to get from point A to point B the fastest. Now, we have to go from point A to point B to point C, and then maybe pass back point A to get to point D. There is a lot more traipsing back and forth. And in this particular layout, we've got a situation where we all started here. we got to come over here and get a red. we got to come over here and get a blue. we got to come all the way over here and get a green, and then we got to make it back. And that's pretty much the norm. So, Eldorado has effectively become a pick-up-and-deliver game in addition to being a race game. And that really uh, changes up a lot of the core concepts, which I'll talk about when we get to the final thoughts. But for now, we're already a few turns into a race. So we're playing it two-player, which means I am the uh, white, which uh, meeples. I've got two adventurers. Jen's got two adventurers. She's a little bit ahead with this guy, a little bit behind with this guy. It is my turn. We've already done a bit of deck building. Let's see what I've got to do. I've got my archaeologist, who I invested in, one of my starting cards, the Traveler, a uh, Student, another starting card, and the Skipper, another starting card. Okay, how am I going to use these? Well, my card I actually paid for, I'll play it first. The special ability here, move a piece up to two times on torch spaces, regardless of how expensive that would be. It would normally cost me three torches to get in here, but I can go boop because of the archaeologist, and then go boop, and I just made it through this tough uh, bit of terrain there. And that means I am now getting closer and closer to these red gems over here. So I moved that guy. And let's see here. My skipper could let me move one space onto water. Or I don't have to. I could move another torch space. Let's say I go like that. Then I got my student. And I've got a traveler. Okay, this traveler is one coin I could use. But I mean, the cheapest I could buy is a tutor over here, which costs two coins. Uh, I could also use it to move through this camp area, which requires a coin. But let's put that aside for a second. Because I've got this other student, which was one of my lousy starting cards. And I've just moved next to a um, spot that if I move into, whatever card I spend, I can spend any card to move in here, and I trash that from my deck. So I could get rid of this student. They would be lost in a tragic accident here in El Dorado. But there is a problem. There is a guardian right here. And guardians are kind of like anti-caves. In the original Quest for El Dorado, if you ever ended up moving and ending your turn next to a cave, you got to explore that cave and find some really cool, useful item. Now, we don't have caves anymore. Instead, if you end your turn next to one of these gardens, you flip it face up, and something bad happens to you. Uh, and there's basically two types of bad things that can happen. Uh, one is you lose coins you may have collected, uh, which is another new element. I'll come back to that in a second. Or the other one is, if nothing bad happens to you, but something good happens to all your opponents. So I would like to get rid of this student. Um, and so if I move here, I get to trash this card, hooray, but now we find out what's what, and... Okay, every other player gets a golden coin. 
So that wasn't so bad. I would have hated to have lost this coin, which I had to use a treasure map. I had to trash this treasure map to be able to get that coin. It would suck to lose it, but I don't. Instead, Jen gets a coin for free. But I got rid of a card, so my deck is a bit tighter. Now, um, I'm not done yet. I've still got one more coin. And remember, I have this coin. We can use these coins as, like, ongoing traveler cards. Of course, if I don't spend this coin, I lose it at the end of the round. Uh, unless I hold on to my hand and don't trick draws me cards. But I could combine both of these to have two bucks to spend to hire a tutor, for example. Or I could use one of them to move. And unfortunately, Jen's in the way, so I can't move into the other one. So, it is dangerous. You like holding on to these coins, because if you get... You, a player can have up to three of them. And so three of them, plus whatever coins your cards give you, that could lead you to really big, huge paydays. You could buy big cards much more quickly than you could in the normal game. Or you can use them to move around. But, if you ever... You can see, this, is, this was a Guardian the Gen previously revealed. This is one. If anybody stops moving adjacent to this space, they will lose all their accumulated coins. And as you can see, there are more Guardians spread all over the place. And at least there's a potential for at least one more of these lose all your coins. Um, so that's a tricky thing. I, I took a chance. I came here. I got a coin. Do I hold on to this for later, knowing I might lose it if bad things happen? Or do I spend this plus this and get a tutor, which will let me move through torches? Because you can see, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of indoor areas. There's tons of torches. The uh, commonality of torches kind of replaces the commonality of jungles in the original games. So what the heck, I'll do it, because I don't want to have that coin and then lose it. Let's say. All right, so that was my turn. Hooray. Got one, two, three, four more to go. Jen's turn, meanwhile. Let's see here. What does she got? She's got her scout. That's pretty nice. She'll go one, two. And um, as you can see, there's very little jungle. This scout is one of your starting cards, which really isn't that useful because there's very little jungle inside of Eldorado. But Jen did have good use for it there. Now, let's see. Now she's got... Oh, she's got her tutor. She'll go on ahead and spend that two to bust through this barrier. The barriers worked the way they did before. This one required two torches to get past. The previous one that Jen got through, because Jen went through the first barrier as well, required you giving up one of your coins. Other ones are don't require you to give up anything. If somebody busts through this barrier, every other player gets to draw a card immediately, so they'll have a better turn. So there's a little bit more variety than we've seen in the past with these barriers we have to bust through. Let's see, and then Jen, all right, so she's got two coins, which isn't quite enough. She could use, um, uh, she could use this coin to move forward here, and then this doubler from her photographer, which is a starting, to move forward too, and she's making good time but it'll be another one. But hey, you know what? In case this is one that makes her lose her coins, it's okay. She spent her extra coin to move there. She spent her photographer to move here. And now she finds out what Guardian awaits. Because after you, I mean, if you in moving, after you played a card or spent a coin, this Guardian, okay. Uh, Jen doesn't, uh, well, actually, Jen would have preferred to see the lose all coins because she doesn't have any coins. She got rid of it. But instead, me, her opponent, I already had one, two, three, four. I had my hand of four. I just got to draw a fifth card, thanks to Jen's progress. All right, so I'll worry about my hand later. Anyway, so that was that. And then she's got one student, which she could move again. She could go here, and she's revealed another uh, guardian. And uh, this one is all other players can now trash a card from their hand. So Jen has just allowed me to permanently get rid of, say... Do I want to get rid of this scout? It is nice for two movement through jungles, but there's so few jungles. Or do I want to get rid of this student? Uh, I think I will get rid of my scout. So I got to do a little bit. And it means I'm going to want to come around. Well, okay, this person's coming this way. I am going to need some jungle stuff. But if I can save up, I could hire a pilot, which is an awesome starting card. It costs six, but it's two of just about anything you could ever want. So that's pretty cool. So that's a bit dangerous. So I'm going to need... I think I'm going to need that scout to get through this jungle that's coming. So I will have used Jen's uh, gift from visiting that garden to get rid of one of my students. I've still got plenty of other ways to go through torch areas. All right, so that was it for Jen. She is almost to her first tunnel. Four. And uh, although this guy has hardly moved at all. And it's back to me, back to my turn. And uh, this is one of the starting ones. This is a treasure map. If I uh, play this now, I'll give myself a coin. I can move into any space. Nothing blocks me, except for mountains. Um, and then this card is gone forever. 
Right. Now is not a good time to use this, though. I would like to get another coin because it gives me so much flexibility. But I've got such easy spaces to move around. I think I'm going to hold on to that for a future round. Let's see. I've got some coins. I will use this photographer to be able to move one, two. And then I'll... I, hey, I, I think I saved that scout. One, two. And now I've got this other photographer. I could buy the last tutor. What the heck? Let's buy the last tutor. And I'm saving my uh, treasure map. I'm just going to hold on to it. Draw one, two, three. Um, and it's Jen's turn now. And as you can see, since we've opened up a spot, Jen, well, however much money she's got, she's got three bucks here. She could buy another hunter or a smuggler, or she could buy a canteen or a gentleman and bring them in the way that uh, El Dorado has always worked. And Jen's got her treasure map. She could use that right now. She could trash this to give herself a coin and get one free move, meaning she didn't need a double torch there, so that's pretty good. But then she's got this single torch she'll use to have Mr. Lagger catch up, and then she's got three coins to spend. Does she want that hunter? These hunters are very, very nice. It was the first thing that we got brought in. Take a coin and trash a card from your hand. No movement, but cleaning up your deck. Or does she want a gentleman? Nice variety uh, for the rest of the game. Or a one-time super powerful canteen. She could take any of those and bring it in. But yeah, she's going to take a hunter. She spent all of that. And that was her turn. One, two, three. Reshuffle. Four. And so that was it for Jen. And uh, so she's rushing ahead. Now here's the thing. Jen might never... I mean, I'm having my two guys... Obviously, I'm splitting up. This one's going to come over here. This one's going to come over here. Jen's coming here. She doesn't have to move this guy any farther forward. Jen could have this one on the way back pick up the red along the way. And here's the interesting thing. Like I said, we have to get both of our adventurers here with all three gems. This is a special two-player rule that this temple, uh, this end one here in a two-player game only, requires that you get both of your adventurers on one of these two spots. And that is tough. That means, um, you know, it might make sense for Jen not to bother having this guy move any farther in this direction. I mean, heck, she might have had him just move over here and starting to get ready. Uh, but ultimately, if Jen comes over here and then catches on the way back and then starts heading this way, both of these have to make it all the way over here and then back. Me, I'm splitting up, but they'll both have to come back and make it all the way back here and then here. Again, it's a special two-player only rule that both of your people have to stand on the same spot at the same time for the final temple. That does not happen with three or four players. But that, folks, should give you a pretty good idea. There's this new concept of coins that you can build up over time, although if you're not careful, you might lose them all, which is very scary. But you can use them to save up for big purchases or be able to help you move. There's these guardians. You never know what they are. But once they've been revealed, if anybody stops by them, the, the effect still happens, but at least once they've been revealed, you know what they are, so you can plan for them as you're moving forward, and a whole bunch of new cards that get introduced into the market in the way it always has. And folks, that those are the basics of El Dorado, the Golden Temples. And as for what Jen and I thought, well, let me tell you, there's a lot to like here. And Jen and I, we have always been big fans of El Dorado, the whole series. Uh, the base game was great. The first expansion, Heroes and Hexes, added some very, very cool stuff. And this expansion adds cool stuff as well. Make no mistake. But like every previous iteration of uh, the quest for El Dorado, there are definitely things in here that we do not like at all, uh, especially because we are two player gamers. Let's talk about the stuff that we really like first. Um, the number one thing that is huge that makes this worth picking up for it, only one reason is the entirely huge amount, 18, if I recall correctly, 18 completely new cards, uh, six new starter cards, 12 additional cards, and unlike Heroes and Hexes, which only added four new cards, which I was so disappointed by because the original Quest for El Dorado, my number one complaint has always been, as a deck builder, where are all the other cards? You need to mix and match so you have different uh, cards that you can buy every time you play, different combinations of stuff. Yes, it's great that the board is different every time, but I need my card market to be different too. And Heroes and Hexes did nothing to help that. Uh, Golden Temples does. Because they introduce a very, very cool system that if you have the original game and Golden Temples and you combine them, what happens is, well, first of all, 
you start out in the jungle, and you have to go through three or four jungle tiles, and that means the, what do you call it, the starting tiles for golden temples are left out, and instead we use the starting cards, the starting cards for the original game. Because at the beginning, there are no torches. You have no torch spaces, so all these torch abilities are useless. Uh, and instead, you're focusing on building a deck to get you through that jungle as fast as you can. But once you make it through the jungle, you don't just end the game when all your guys reach El Dorado. Instead, they walk in here from a jungle tile, and then all of a sudden, you have to shift gears, and suddenly, torches become very important, and all those machetes you had were not so useful anymore. That's just kind of like a cool event that changes up the feel of the game once you make it into El Dorado. But the more important thing is, yes, you start out with regular... Uh, quest for El Dorado cards, not the new starting cards. But your market is a combination of new cards and old cards. What you do as part of setup is you take one of the uh, what is that? That's 24 different cards, I guess, that are available. You take one of each, shuffle them up, and to populate the futures market, you draw cards from that, and that's how you randomize, get a collection of all kinds of different cards. Uh, and what eventually happens is, you know, eventually somebody buys all the cards out, and then somebody says, oh, you know what? I'm going to bring scrolls in. That's really cool. Now that there's a new space open up here, you go back to the card randomizer deck, and you say, oh, now these are available. And so you add the triple... So you every time you play, you are going to get a very, very different collection of cards to buy from in the market. And the market will evolve in two different places. The new stuff that gets brought in for immediate purchase and the stuff that comes in for futures, all based on this very nice randomized system that I love. And I am so, so happy about this. This in and of itself makes Golden Temples worth it. Just to get these new cards so that even... Um, you know, if you, uh, you know, even if you didn't care about all the rest of the features here, you get a much stronger overall experience because of the more flexibility as you play and get more and more stuff. And never mind the fact that I really do like the gold coins. No player can have more than three. They're very, very cool. They lead to bigger purchases earlier. That's their main use. But in the early game, these are very, very tough to get. Although there's always one way. This is something that you would never want to do under the original circumstances. But if your turn comes around and your card's like, ugh, this is not enough for to buy a good card. This is not really going to help me move either. This happens sometimes. And in regular El Dorado, tough luck. Hopefully your next hand is better. But now, in this game, you can pass. You can skip your entire turn. Do nothing. Don't buy anything. Don't move. And if you do that you get a gold coin for free. And sometimes you will do that because you can't make any good progress, you can't buy, but having another gold coin is everything. So you get to move through your deck faster, build up, and that's awesome. So these gold coins are great. I love them too. Um, and, uh, you know, a bunch of these new cards, the Gatherer, the Outfitter, uh, you know, there, there are, there's very, very cool new cards that get mixed into the overall. I do like, like I said, if you combine the two sets, this idea that early on I care about machetes, late in the game I don't care about machetes, I care about torches. Can I make that transition? That's really cool. Uh, I think, overall, I do like the idea of once you get inside, there are no more caves inside. Instead, there are these Guardians, which are anti-caves. They are negative caves. That's very, very cool especially because the majority of them, they don't really hurt you. They just help your teammates I real or your, your opponents. I like that a lot. Uh, you know, it's a nice change from Heroes and Hexes, which introduced a lot of really, in my opinion, unnecessary player versus player take that type uh, screwage and stealing and stuff like that. Much nicer that the interaction comes here in the form of, oh, well... Uh, what do you know? Everybody gets a bonus because of a, because I'm moving really... Because I'm far ahead. Uh, I'm screaming at him and I'm revealing all these Guardians. And sometimes there are enough of them that it's hard to get past them. If you've got the right cards, you could pay enough to move all the way past them without having to stop. But that's going to be tough to do, usually. You need very specific cards to be able to do that. So generally, if you're off in the lead, you will be triggering stuff for people who are lagging. And that helps them. But then eventually they'll catch up and they'll help you. It's really nice, a much better idea of interaction than what Heroes and Hexes had going on. So I like them. And uh, there's one thing. So I've just talked about everything I really like about this expansion. And it's a lot of great stuff. There's one thing I'm really not a fan of, though. And it is the notion of the fact that with Golden Temples, Race for Eldorado has gone, gone from, or Quest for Eldorado has gone from just being a race to being a race and pick up and deliver at the same time. And pick up and deliver is never a gameplay mechanism that my wife and I particularly enjoy because 
the the fundamental nature is, hey, once I move it all the way up here and I get these things, then I've got to come all the way back. Having to retrace your steps, Jen and I have often found, it's why we don't like pick up and deliver games, it's never very satisfying. It is always fun to be moving forward, to blazing new trails and dealing with new problems. And in the original quest for Eldorado, depending on the layout of the board, once you made it through certain sections, you might start trying to thin your deck because, oh, now that I'm through all that, I don't need as many paddles anymore. I need to get rid of these so I can get to my machetes more quickly. In this game, that still happens if you combine them when you switch from machete heavy to torch heavy, but um, you know, once I've moved all the way up here, I don't want to have got any cards because I'm going to need all my cards to come back. And so that's a really weird thing. If you get Golden Temples only as a standalone game, well, honestly, I don't know if I would recommend it because unless you love Pick Up and Deliver because we have played it as a standalone game and we found it felt like it dragged on, even though ultimately you end up going, uh, you know, regular Quest for Eldor, you go through about six tiles, and here we'd go through one, two, three, four, five, six. And we still spend the same amount of time traveling, but we keep retracing our steps, and it means um, we still need to kind of hold on to all the cards, or universal cards become much more valuable, and it just doesn't feel as satisfying as blazing new trails, rather than just revisiting the old trails we've been to. This is a, more than anything else, this is a psychological thing for me and Jen, that we're less than fond of. But that wouldn't be too bad if it weren't for this tile. This tile, which is only for two players, says uh, it's the final temple we have to get to and both of our explorers have to get here. This becomes super annoying and we hated it. We could not stand it because um, it makes the game last almost twice as long for two players because suddenly, um, you know, okay, well, uh, we had, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, it goes from an average of six tiles you have to go through to ten tiles you have to go through. And those last few tiles, which again are just all about going someplace and then retracing your steps coming back, Oh, they just drag. The game ends up lasting significantly longer, but not really giving you anything new and cool. It's just... Now, some people might like that, because when you get to that point, you've got a pretty solid deck, and you're done deck building, and you just want to run your deck as fast as you can. So I guess there's some strength to it, but Jen and I, we just hated it. Hated it! Um, you know, and so much so that we used some expletives while we were playing it. Oh my gosh, this is... Bleep. Um, when we realized... And here's the interesting thing, too, folks. We didn't realize this at first. The English version of the rules for uh, Golden Temples completely forgot to add the... Uh, the What do you call it? The sentence that explains what these double-player icons mean. And again, what they mean is both players... Or in a two-player game, only in a two-player game, you have to get both your explorers here. I would almost wish... I mean, I, I wouldn't mind this at all if... you know, And honestly, I think the game would be better if this icon wasn't here. And oh yeah, there's three places to go. I'll have this guy go over there, I'll have the other guy go over there, and I'll have the one guy catch on the way back, and the other one will just stand here waiting. But that's a risk, because if one person's waiting, then all my moves have to be good. This, it's really terrible. I see no upside to it. I understand why it's here. It's probably to try to emulate... With more players, everybody converging, trying to get here at the same time. Because with more players, everybody only has one explorer, so there's a lot more blocking. And this is to try to emulate that blocking, but in so doing, they make the game last way over long. Overstays its welcome, and we hate it. Now, here's why I don't particularly mind. Here's why I wouldn't want to play Golden Temples as a standalone, where it's nothing but the temple and this, for my opinion, terrible two-player rule. In the, If you combine Golden Temples with the original game, and you could also throw in Heroes and Hexes if you want, but you don't need to, what happens is two-thirds of the board is jungle, the original stuff. And then one-third of the board, or maybe like a quarter of the board, is the temples, and you only go through two temples. So you are, at least, I'm assuming, because the rules never make this clear, the English rules or the original German rules never make it clear if you are required to use this. This uh, special end final, uh, you know, final gems, the green ones. So when Jen and I played, we just said, oh, you know what, this is the one we didn't use, so we're only using these two. And because we only had to do two instead of three, the back and forth, the... Ugh, trying to walk back the way, same way we came was really reduced significantly. So the vast majority of the game was straight up race. And then at the end, you had this little bit, right, we've made it in here. Let's split up and come back together. Suddenly, it worked. And so that's why I'm saying 
Golden Temples, first of all, adds a lot of stuff. I, I couldn't imagine wanting to play Quest for Eldorado without Golden Temples solely because of all the additional cards. And now, finally, the number one problem with uh, Eldorado has been fixed. Lots of card variability. Hooray! Um... So, but the thing is, a lot of these cards create torches. So you can't really, a lot of these cards are useless unless you're playing with a full. But when you combine the two and you throw away this terrible temple, which again, this might be a house rule. The rules never make it clear. Maybe you're required to use it no matter what, but we're going to continue to throw it away. So we just have a little bit of pick up and deliver to kind of break the game up at the same time that our decks suddenly fail us. Because we have, if we have decks full of nothing but machetes, they don't help very much when you get inside the Golden Temple. And so you've got to be ready to pivot. That's really cool. I like that a lot. And because it gives us a chance to throw away literally the worst thing that has ever hit the Eldorado franchise, in our opinion, it suddenly becomes Bundarbar. And we love it a lot. So... Um, there's definitely a, 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 you know, a lot of stuff to bear in mind, and uh, I, I think this is, even though it works as a standalone, I think it's a good standalone if you're going to play with three or four players. I would not want to ever play this as a standalone with two because of this special rule, but as a two-player game, when you combine it with the original game, mwah, it's, it's fantastic. And that's it, folks. That's a quick rundown for the latest uh, Quest for Eldorado, the Golden Temples. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye